What's going on Explorers? Welcome to a new video and today we're talking optics. Now you obviously read the title and that's why you clicked this video. And some of you already have a preformed opinion, you're just eager to type a comment about how what an idiot I am for putting a $600 optic on a $300 replica. Well, let me tell you why I do the things that I do. Now the first reason I'll give you is not going to be very convincing and that's me liking optics. I like the real optics. They're cool, I've seen them in video games and movies. To me, it's only a piece of history and owning something that has actual value and retains value, unlike replicas. Now that's a very superficial reason and easy to debunk. Now one thing we get hung up on is real, fake, replica, all that. Now airsoft guns are replicas by nature and they need to be replicas, they can't be real guns because what we use them for is in itself is a replica activity and they need to be replicas, they need to be non-harmful. Whereas optics, they don't need to be replicas, you can use the real thing and the real thing is superior to the replica. Of course, the biggest argument for using a fake optic is the price. I think that's really the only winning point it has. And that's a big one, don't get me wrong, obviously spending $30 to $100 on a replica is a lot different than spending 400 to into the thousands on the real thing. If you're the type of person that appreciates quality and products functioning as they're designed, uh, you would never really even consider a replica to be used for its intended purposes on an airsoft or any other gun for that matter. So let me take you through kind of my history with optics and how I got into owning real optics and spending a good chunk of money on them. Now just like most people that get into airsoft, of course the first thing I did was get a fake optic. Now here's a collection of these, uh, they range from red dots, we got that Aimpoint Comp Amp 2, a fake ACOG, here's a Leaper Scope, and this is a Tag Fire 124. Now, the reason you see these sitting here by themselves versus the real ones on top of my airsoft guns is because these all came out of a box labeled optics slash sights. Well, these are in constant use whenever I get to head out to the field. So that tells you something about the usability and longevity of these optics. After trying a few of these and then trying some more of them, uh, these are throughout the years. I didn't just like buy one replica and say, forget it, I give up on it. I kept going back to it because, you know, I don't want to blow through a bunch of money. I'd rather get a $50 or $100 replica and have it fill my needs. I ended up buying my first EOTech and that was uh, EOTech 551, which ran off these super hard to find E90 batteries. And really I used that for about 10 years after I first got it. Never really considered anything else. It was fine. It was great. Uh, I put on every gun. Then once I started getting into some long range stuff and just kind of expanding and the POV camera stuff, I then started collecting some more. So I got this uh, Trigicon ACOG. Then I got a new EOTech. This is an XPS 2 or 3, but this is the modern one that uses a CR123. And then just recently I picked up this Trigicon RX30 reflex sight and this is heavily driven by my POV cam with its really big window on the back which makes it great for sharing that POV view with the viewers. Now as far as scopes are concerned I do use pretty inexpensive scopes. I have a couple of Monstrum scopes on my sniper rifles and they really get the job done. I never really had to go higher than uh, that $100 to $200 range for scopes. They hold their zero, they have edge reticles, so battery and brightness is not an issue. And they look cool, they mount well, there's really no complaints, nice eye relief. And I've never really moved into that higher range of uh, scopes, the magnified scopes. But talking about reflex, hollow sights, red dots, all that, those really suffer when they go from the real thing to the replica. Let me go over some of the pros and cons of replicas versus the real stuff. As far as I see it, as I mentioned, the only pro to the replicas is the price. They range even from about 30 bucks to 100 bucks. And they come with a variety of models, including an ACOG. As you can see, here's a replica, here's the real deal. I know there's fake EOTechs, I've looked through them, they're terrible. There's a lot of um, T1 micros, MROs, stuff like that. Now, some things you won't find in replica form like this. RX30. So if that's something you like, you pretty much can have to go the route of the real thing. Living in the, in the USA, we have no restrictions on optics. I could pretty much buy any optic available to the military law enforcement. So for me, variety is not a limit here. I don't know about other countries. Maybe you can't own 
the real stuff so I could see how the replica would be appealing in that sense but if you could get past the price as in you don't think a replica Pontiac Fiero made to look like a Lamborghini Countach is the same as a Countach then you can start seeing my point here one of the big advantages with real optics is they're designed to be used in real environments um, airsoft optics seem to be mostly designed to look like real optics the, the function itself is not really that big of an issue the real optics are usually waterproof, dustproof, sandproof, shockproof, recoil proof they're good at holding their zero and they have great levels of brightness and the, to me this is a huge issue um, when you go out there with an airsoft replica or even a cheapo real gun optic you'll quickly realize how dim they are and when you're out in a bright sunny day and the thing washes out completely it really has no purpose anymore you're now just limiting your field of view by looking through a toilet paper tube at that point you're better off with iron sights or a flat top rail and just walking the bb's in but these optics they're designed to be out in the sun or dim light or indoors uh, a lot of these optics automatically adjust like these trigicons they have the fiber optic which will take in the light and adjust accordingly the brightness of the reticle and then they have trinium for at nighttime which not super applicable for airsoft but it's a low power glowing dot that will stay on another advantage with something like these trigicons they're expensive obviously but they don't need batteries they have a lifetime supply and they'll run probably longer than you play airsoft uh, something like the CO Tech, it does need a battery or the Hollow Sun, but they're usually pretty standardized batteries and they'll last a good chunk of time and stay bright the whole time or give you a warning when you're running out of battery. So you're always ready and you're never lagging behind. Uh, we as airsofters, we use these things pretty hard. I think I would make an argument much harder than guys that go to the range and shoot at paper targets. Now they do have recoil, so obviously they need optics that can handle that. But we're out there crawling, we're banging our guns, dropping them sometimes. In fact, the EOTech 551 I have, uh, used, I used to do these intros on my channel where I would do a 360 spinning gun. And for that, I needed to suspend the gun on some fishing wire on the blue screen spin that cut everything out. Anyway, I was recording my Crytek SPR for this and I had the EOTech 551 on it. And the fishing line broke, the thing fell down onto a concrete garage floor. And guess what? The EOTech kept on going with a bent protective hood, but the Crytek cracked in half. That right there kind of shows you how durable they are. It's to me, that's a big thing. I just want my stuff to work. The thing I hate the most is when something just doesn't work. It doesn't matter that I didn't pay a lot of money for it. If it doesn't work, it's useless. It could be zero dollars. And if it doesn't work, it's it's worth those zero dollars it might actually be worth more of a headache and i'd rather not have it at all than have it for zero dollars so when things just work that's one less thing to worry about airsoft has so many moving parts so many things to forget or fail on you that knowing your optic was designed to function in a real war environment with um, unpredictable weather and gunfire and recoil and shock and rain and snow and whatever you know it'll hold up well in airsoft. Now, as I mentioned, I don't think um, replicas are really designed to function as anything other than a, a prop, really. It's kind of like airsoft flashlights or cheaper flashlights you get for $30. You turn that thing on, it's less bright than your phone flashlight. So it doesn't do the very thing it was designed for. Same with these optics. They're, they have a little dot that glows in there, but it's dim and it's usually not parallax free i don't think any of them are now if you don't know what that means i don't know the signs behind it but what happens is when you look through a red dot sight when you see your reticle it doesn't matter where your eye is your reticle is always looking where you zeroed it in it's in line with the gun you can move your head around and the dot will stay looking at the target that's a huge feature which means when anytime you align that dot with the target and if your gun's up to snuff when you pull the trigger, the BB is going to go right there where your dot's looking, which means you're quicker on target. You're more likely to hit on that first shot before you spook the enemy. And no matter how your head comes in on the gun, if you're maybe shooting off a weird position, or you're shooting at an angle or you're shooting prone, as long as you put that dot on the target, that's where the BB will go. That's a huge thing because shooting this POV videos lately, I've realized my head is never in the same place twice. Uh, it's always 
maybe it's a little more right i'm looking at bottom right corner of the eotech the second you pick up that dot you stop worrying about if it's in the center of the screen all you care about is you see it and you see the target moving and you're trying to pull the trigger as fast as possible you're not sitting there lining things up so knowing that dot target pull the trigger that's where the bb should go it's huge that's what it's for that's the whole purpose this was designed for and that's something you don't get with replicas where it's just some dot projected onto whatever screen why use this thing if it's not going to do the job it was designed for and in the same vein because of the quality you get with real optics you get clear glass and that's a big plus um, if you've ever looked through some of these replicas i remember looking from through my friend's eotech replica it the thing looked all mirrored it had a blue tint to it it had almost a sunglass effect to it where it darkened the whole atmosphere and now it becomes again it becomes more of a distraction than an aid to help you aim and that's again the whole point of a red dot is to help you aim quicker easier and because these red dots or you know magnified optics are made by real companies with real people working there and futures and pasts they have warranties or they have a service department so they retain their value as in you could actually get a maintenance and when you go to resell them, you could probably sell most of these for about 90% of the original purchase price because the optic game doesn't change that fast and they have value either because they're still applicable and the people are still using them or maybe someone's building a historic kit. You'll always find somebody to take them off. And of course, these things have warranties. Uh, my EOTech 551, at some point it did stop working. The, the piece that projects the, the holographic image onto the screen, it came loose, I guess, on glued. So I was getting nothing. Now I had bought that site on eBay and I had absolutely no proof of purchase. I didn't have a warranty card or anything. So what I had to do was I just contacted EOTech. I said, hey, my thing broke. I'd like to get it fixed. I wasn't trying to get it fixed for free or anything. I just wanted it fixed because, you know, I'm a few hundred bucks into this thing. And I'd like to have it working. Uh, they sent me an RMA or whatever. I sent it in. They fixed it, sent it back. Um, completely free of charge and unexpected. So that was great customer service and that's what you're paying for when you pay the higher price as well. You have that warranty and you have an expert that can fix your expensive optic if something happens to it. Now, of course, if you have your real optics on your fake guns and eventually you want to transition to real guns, if you happen to live in a country or a state that allows you to own cool things like this in real form, then you're ready to go you just grab your optic off your replica you put it on your real firearm and everything you're used to the way it functions the way your eye is set up for it you're good to go so there's that advantage if you are trying to use airsoft for practice or if you're not sure you're trying to get into firearms but you want to start with airsoft and eventually migrate to real firearms a real optic will migrate with you Ironically, however, both of these real or fake optics need protection from airsoft BBs. That's the one thing that they can't handle, and that's BBs. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying all of them can. I, who's going to test this sort of thing and shoot a 500 to thousand dollar optic with an airsoft BB? But I've definitely seen plenty of EOTechs with blown out glass from people that use them without glass protectors. So on all my optics. I do run something protective on the front, either like on this ACOG, I have a kill flash on the front, which is a metal cage essentially that doesn't get in the way of the view, but will definitely stop a BB. Or on the EOTEX, I have a piece of Lexan that I either mount into the hood. On the hollow sun, for example, I just cut a perfect circle and shoved into the front and it looks nice and clean. You don't even know I have anything on the front really. What I do hate is those shields that people put up in front of them that nothing screams airsoft more than that clip-on shield that blocks your optic. Come on, people. Get, get a little creative. Find something. Don't just shove a piece of wall, clear wall in front of your optics. Personal pet peeve of mine, but there's an easy way to protect these without giving up the look. So put some effort into it. If you do decide to buy real or fake, I have a couple of suggestions. Now, if you're buying real optics, buy from a reputable source. I have no affiliation with Optics Planet, but I know they're a solid company. Optics is in the name. They're located in the US. They have a return policy, so you could safely buy from there. Uh, a lot of airsoft stores carry real stuff. I know Evic has Trigicon products, so that's a pretty safe bet. And of course, Amazon is a good company where it's real easy to return. And if you click the link below, 
um, you can help the channel as well. Now I did buy a few things off eBay secondhand like this uh, ACOG and my original 551 EOTech and there I did a lot of research you got to know what to look for and make sure you don't pick up a, a replica so it's a little sketchier buying secondhand or buying off eBay but if you know what you're looking for you can identify the real versus the fake a lot of manufacturers actually have documentation on their own website that tells you what to look for in a airsoft or whatever replica versus the real product now if you are looking to save some bucks don't worry you don't need to spend 500 to multiple thousands of dollars to get a quality red dot i do have a hollow sun t1 style red dot and it works really well it's bright enough for the outdoors for the most part and it comes in just a little over a hundred dollars i believe so that's something if you're looking for a red dot um, now scopes like i said i do have plenty of inexpensive scopes and now inexpensive is relative but i'm talking about somewhere 100 to 200 dollar range monster makes some great scopes what's good about those is they do have they usually have glowing reticles, which is pretty useless on scopes, but they do have etched reticles, so they will run without a battery, without anything. They're good at holding zero. They have good eye relief compared to something like this Leaper scope, which has terrible eye relief. You have about a centimeter where you get a somewhat of a clear picture. Anything past that, it starts tunneling or just blowing out. If you're saving money, go with something like a Monstrum scope or something from Hollow Sound. They make really quality inexpensive products so they're somewhere in between the replicas and the you know your Trigicons or EOTechs. You do have some options now if you're just looking to put a cool thing on top of your gun to make it look like you have an optic and you're just going to shoot down sights or you're going to walk the BBs in by all means buy a replica. Uh, it'll look just as cool it'll be durable enough nobody will know the difference. Now the nice thing about buying real stuff is you are supporting people that create products they do R&D they spend a lot of money they're innovators and that's worth something to me as well because I myself create things and I hate when people rip me off so I'm not big on ripoffs when the real deal is an option so that's kind of my reason for why I use red dots I don't really need to justify it to you guys but if you're maybe looking for a red dot or you're thinking hey why would somebody do this there's I'm seeing the same optic for $45 on the Sarasoft website, why would I buy it for $600 or $1,000? Well, that's the reason. You're essentially buying a thing that looks like a thing that has almost no function of the real thing. Uh, I've heard some good things about like the G&G &G replica optics, but from everything I've tried, and you can see I have a pretty decent collection here that just sits in a box and it's essentially just dead weight that I'm, I can't quite throw away but as far as using it for optics in the game there's no replacement for the real stuff for me so hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you like this kind of theory video um you know we're in quarantine right now so coming up with things to do things to discuss let me know what you think if you have some ideas and maybe even hit the subscribe button thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one